Okay, Billy or Besta or Calax, what do I do? Oh, here's a video from Scott. Hi there. It's Scott Nicholson. I have been moving. Well, I've moved actually from uh, Syracuse to Brantford, Ontario with 540 of these boxes, a bunch of which contain board games. Now, I needed some shelves for all these things, so I went to the local Ikea and was pretty overwhelmed by the choices. What I decided to do was buy some of each and compare them for you, the loyal viewer. So, can't we just get to it? Why, are, why do you have to be funny so much? Excuse me? What's with all the comedy? Just get right to it. What? You, you can't watch an intro? That, that's kind of what I do, you know? If you haven't, have you watched board games with Scott? I do a funny intro, and then I give you good content, and then I end with some nebulous conclusion to let you make up your own mind. Yeah, I know. It depends. It depends. It's what you say about your favorite board games, too. I don't have time for that. Just what should I buy? Fine, fine. Here's the quick and dirty. If you want the least expensive solution, go with the Billy. If you want the most flexible solution, go with the Besta. If you want the stylish solution, go with the Calax. Okay? Thank you. Was that so hard? Gosh, who needs all this funny stuff? Fine. Yeah, why don't you go watch some other podcasts? You can probably find one that's more to your liking. Now, for the rest of you, let's talk a little bit about shelving. Here on Board Game Shelves with... So this is the Calyx. It used to be known as the Expedite. Uh, so this shelf is the only one of the ones I'm going to talk about that can be freestanding. So if you want something to be used as a room divider, this is your only choice. This is also known as the Gamer Shelf. This is the one you see a lot of people use. So it's one of the ones I picked up. Now, the difference between the Expedite and the Calyx, and the Calyx is the only one available now. The Calyx has thinner walls than the Expedite. But uh, the Calyx is your choice. Now, this is the 5x5 five five version, so it's a 6 foot square made of 25 boxes. You can also get a 4x4 four four version, and you can get 2x4 versions. And the 2x4 versions you can turn either way. So you've got a lot of flexibility with this system. Of the three, this was by far the hardest one to put together. I did this, these all by myself, and so this was a nightmare. And the nightmare came in a couple ways. It came right at the end. So assembling all the blocks was pretty easy. It was just the process. You put in pegs, the pegs go in holes, you tighten it up and that's all fine. The problem came on adding the two ends. So you've got all of these shelves in here, they all have pegs sticking out the end, and you've got to manipulate this one board to make it hit all of the pegs at the same time. And throughout, there's lots of slide and shimmy and shimmer, and so the problem here is that these all don't line up. I would highly suggest, if you don't want to call out, for the love of God, please help me 30 times when you're installing it to find a friend to help you, especially with just these last, the last three things. So putting this board onto here, and then the final board cinches the whole thing together. And of course it doesn't line up because everything's off a little bit. And again, having a friend there to help you line the holes up would be great. And the third thing is to have a friend available to help you pick it up because you're going to assemble it on the floor and lift it up. So I had to use all of my muscles to lift this up by myself and get it into place and, and then secure it to the wall. My plan is to use this as the baseline because this has a fixed six foot width. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this up with games in my collection. Now I have it unpacked. So I'm just going to be picking random boxes of board games and putting them in this shelf. So I'm not going to cherry pick just the games that fit all the squares. I'm actually going to be just picking what's here because that's actually going to simulate your kind of collection. Now, one thing to know about this unit is you don't have to put all these slats in. And a lot of people, if this is their only storage unit, that's what they do. They leave slats out. That allows them to place longer games this way if they want to do that. Uh, because of the difficulty of the final two steps, I did not want to have to take it apart and put slats back in. For me, since I have several different types of shelves, I'm going to end up using this for games that fit this space. But for today, I'm going to just be putting in whatever games I come across into this shelving unit, dealing with the fact that it's this narrow. So we'll see what we end up with. Here we go. There. Ta-da! That's all you need. Oh. 
So of course the second one I just pull out really is this. So I guess that's all you need. There. Just for reference, by the way, this box, this box fits the width of this shelf. So anything wider than this is going to stick out. But this box fits the width of the shelf just fine. By the way, this is an awesome game. If you haven't played it, it's one of the, it's a rare quality uh, Hasbro game that was licensed, but it's actually really good. Oh, and this thing, this is actually how I'm able to stand my games up and not have them fall apart. Um, I use, this is sewing elastic, and so it's not rubber band. It's not going to decompose like a rubber band will. It's not going to stick to the box because it's imbued with fabric. But that's what I do. I found my hat. There. Another one of the Scott Nicholson collection. Okay, I'm going to stop at this because now I'm at the point where as I add new games, I'm having a hard time finding places for them. So let me talk you through some of the things I noticed as I was stacking the shelves about this unit. So card games, I could spend a lot of time trying to organize these into neat little stacks. I just shoved them in here to show you what happens. But uh, the reality is I like to use uh, CD holders for card games. So I have a cabinet that's designed to hold CDs and, and v VHS tapes. Those work great for card games for me. Longer games. So here's a number of longer games. Now again, this is a place where I could have taken out this middle unit and put the games flat. Um, I didn't do that because I didn't want to rebuild it. However, it, they actually don't stick out that long. As you can see, while they do stick out, they don't stick out that bad. So. While it's not pretty, it doesn't make everything align nicely. It's not so bad. Up top, these are games that I pulled out that would not fit in a box. So the nice thing is you do have the top shelf. You can put those big games on, but just know that not everything fits in a box. The biggest surprise that I had as I was doing this is how many wasted areas of space there are on these shelves. That you could spend a lot of time moving things around to try and compact each little cube the problem with doing that is that then you lose the ability to keep things in theme. So what I like to do, now these are not shelved very well in theme because I'm going to be moving them twice more as I make this video. Thanks, internet. But uh, the idea here is I like to put games that have the similar play experience together. So like I want to play this kind of game, you go to one area of the shelf and all that kind of game are there. If you try to fill in all the empty spaces, you're not going to be able to do that. So. I suspect quite a bit of space is actually lost in this unit because of the wood every so often and the space you lose in every cube because you can't pile it in. So it held about 150 games. I've got a quadrant there of role-playing games. I don't know really how to count those, but about 150 games go into this. So now what I'm going to do, we know this was six feet for 150 games. I'm going to now load them into the Besta which means now I need to clear all the boxes that are in front of my bestas over there. Now we're looking at the besta. Now the besta, that's, this is the most expensive of the three units, although I'll talk a little bit about price later on when we get to our comparisons of these three things. The besta is actually designed as media cabinets. These are designed to go into your living room. They're very deep. They hold um, do VCRs and that sort of thing. Of the three, this was the easiest to assemble. This is separate units. Each unit is about two feet. So I've got three units here side by side. Um, I'm going to start from this side and work my way over and we're going to see how much the games that we just put on the six feet of the Calax slash Expedite fit on the Besta units. Now the main reason these were easier to assemble than the others is because it didn't require a hammer and everything slotted in very nicely. They were smaller. It was much easier for one person to do. 
these have adjustable shelves, so there's holes all the way down, and you get pegs. The difficulty and what makes this more expensive than the other two is that you have to buy each shelf separately. With the, uh, with the Calax and the Billy, the bookcases, they come with the shelves. With this one, each shelf you have to purchase separately. Let's bring the games over. By the way, if you didn't know, this was the original Arkham Horror. It's got a lot of similarities. It was put out by Chaosium uh, back in the 80s. And a lot of similarities to the big board game Arkham Horror. Uh, you die just as quick. You've got the Doom Track, monsters pouring out of things that you have to kill, traveling to other worlds. It's a lot more luck dependent, but if you're a fan of Arkham Horror, you should check this one out too. All right, so there we go. We've now put everything from that shelf. Oh, except for one thing. So, we've put everything from the Calax over into the Besta. Now, a few things that I've noticed as I was doing this, most of the games fit all the way within the Besta. What I realized is I thought the Calax was, was not as deep, but it's actually right about the same depth. The Buffy game fits about the same here. One big difference is that there's a back on the Bestas, and therefore there's a limit. With the, the Calax, you could actually have it away from the wall a little bit and slide things into the back, but you have to worry about anchoring it. You need to anchor it in some way. Um, so with these, there's an actual back, so there is a limit as to how far back they can go. Now, what I'm noticing is that with these, with these adjustable shelves, I actually am wondering if I could adjust these a little bit to use things a little bit more effectively. I think if I worked on the whole shelving, I could probably get one more free shelf if I adjusted the shelves appropriately for the height, because there's a few spaces where I've lost some inches here and some space like that. Now, you notice I haven't used it all. If you look down here, there's some empty space. So about to guess that's about 15% um, of the shelving unit is I still have available. So I actually have room for probably another oh, uh, 20 games or so based upon, 10 to 20 games based upon how I shelve things. The adjustable shelves are very nice. You can actually get adjusted to the height that you want. But if you're going to do that, that means you're sorting your games by height, which again gets away from the, I'm sorting the games by the game experience they provide. So you have to make a decision on that. So let me show you the side view of this so you can see how far these games stick out. So as you can see, some of the bigger games stick out about a hand. It's about the same as how far they stuck out on the other one. It did, however, handle all the card games much more nicely. So if you're going to be not putting cards games in something else, this is actually a nicer solution than trying to use those cubes. So there we go. That's two of them so far. Now we've looked at the Calax and we've looked at the Besta. Now the Billies. My billies are upstairs in my office, which is currently completely full of boxes. So I don't have a nice way to set up a long shot like I've got here. So we'll go up there now. I'm going to do the best that I can. But I'm still going to carry 150 games up a flight of stairs for no reason other than to make this video internet. All right, so now here I am with the billies. Now the billies are more of your standard bookcase. So they're only about maybe a foot deep. That's probably the biggest problem with them, is a lot of the games are going to stick out now over the shelves. They are the cheapest, however, of everything we've looked at today. Assembly-wise, they were in the middle. Uh, they were not that much harder than the Besta. The big difference is on the Besta, the backs of the bookcases slid into a slot and locked into place. You didn't need a tool. On the Billies, while the backs slid into a slot, you had to hammer nails in to uh, get them all in place. And of course, because I am not the master carpenter. There's a number of nail holes where I missed the shelves and went through and made a mess. But anyway, so the billies were harder to assemble than the Besta, but not as hard as the Calax was. Um, I could do the billies by myself comfortably. I could do the Besta by myself comfortably, although they were heavy. The Calax, I definitely would want a person if I were going to do it again. Some other differences. So the billies are the tallest of what we looked at. So the Calax was six feet. The Bestas were six foot four. This is six foot eight, so it's, it's taller. Um, it's also wider, so the Bestas were two feet wide, so we had three Besta units to equal the six feet of the Calax. These are more about 32 inches across, so these two together are pushing five and a half feet, so we don't quite have six feet of wall space here. We're gonna see how this works with all of the games that I have. I do have a third unit here, so we'll see how much overlap we go into the third unit if we need to do that, just so I can have that point of comparison for you because I love you that much. 
Also, because the camera is in the way in the door, because this room is full of boxes and it's a small room, I will not be doing the time lapse. I'll do the first part because I brought a box up with me, but other than that, you'll just have to go with the magic of wavy lines to let everything fill up. So here we go. And now through the magic of the internet, ta-da! So here's the same set of games that we've seen before, put into two Billy cases. Uh, so there's some challenges that I ran into here. The biggest challenge is with long games. Um, now these Billy cases are only about a foot wide, and so the problem is any games that are more than two feet wide, once you put them on the shelf, they become very tippy, and so. They, it's dangerous. Uh, we have a visitor here, by the way. Oh, yes. Say hello to the world. This is, this is my kitty, Gregory. Gregory says hi. Hello, I have, I have extra paws. I can pick things up, and I am evolving, and I will destroy you all. So anyway, this is our cat, Gregory. He's very explorey right now in the new house. Anyway, back to the shelving. So, so this is the Billy. Um, Things didn't fit quite well in the billy, and so as I mentioned earlier, the problem with any long games, anything that's longer than two feet, I'd put it on the shelf and it would, it would just tip with a touch, and that made me very nervous. So anything like that, I had to put my toys. And the only way to get all of the games to fit on these two shelves is to put more stuff on the top, the, these longer games on the top. So that was the way to get it all to fit. So, but I did get it all to fit on the two shelves as compared to the three Besta or the uh, one Calyx. So let's do a few close-ups so you can see how bad these things stick out. So here's the side view. Um, everything does stick out some. You can see the top, almost a little bit dangerous there. Uh, so there is a lot of protrusion of games, as you can see with this. Your standard Euro games are fine, but anything that's longer can be problematic. So there you go. Now you've seen the Calax, you've seen the Besta, and you've seen the Billy. Now how do I compare these three things? If it is money that is the main consideration, then the Billy is the best choice. Because in the two Billies, which is about $150, um, I was able to put everything that I was able to put in three Bestas or the one Calyx. The one Calyx is about $200, the three Bestas with the shelves are about $300. And the, those numbers are based on what I paid in Canada, so your local IKEA numbers will, will differ, but percentage-wise it's probably going to work out about the same. The problem with the Billy is it was clunky in a lot of ways. It didn't handle those long games very well. So if you have a lot of long games in your collection, you want to think about having perhaps a combination of things. You could get some Billies for all of your normal size games and then a one Besta for the longer stuff. That might work out quite well. If, you, if your collection is mainly of those Euro games sizes, then the Billy or the Calax would work. The Calax was about 150 games and took up six feet of wall space. So you have to have six feet of wall space and you want to think about the size of your collection. If you have about 150 games, then that'd be a good one to go with. Um, the nice thing about the Billies and the Bestas is they're smaller. So with the Billies, you, each one was about 75 games, and with the Bestas, each one was about 50 games. So you could buy those in piecemeal. The Bestas only being two feet wide are the most flexible solution because you could move them to a lot of places. Also with the Bestas, because it had the deeper shelves, fewer of the games stuck out, and I didn't have to worry about the long games. They would, could be accommodated in those shelves quite nicely. So if you have about 150 or some multiple of 150 um, Euro game size games, then the Calaxes are nice to use. If you want to use one as a room divider, you can even do that. You can access it from both sides. Um, if it's money that you're worried about and want to get do this the cheapest, then the Billies are your best choice. And if you have more money and you want something that's really flexible because it's narrow and you can reposition them in a lot of different ways, then I'd go with the Besta. Uh, for me, I have a combination. So in my game room right now, I have my one Calyx unit that I'll use for the Euro game type games. And then I have a number of Bestas that then I can move around the room as needed to be more flexible. So now after all those flights of stairs, I can now put my feet up and rest a little bit because I'm ready to stop unpacking for a little bit. Oof. Scott? Yes? Do you know what this is? <sighs> Gotta go, Internet. Bye-bye. You know, 
I bet you even skipped the ad at the beginning of this video. That's the only way we can make money off these things, you know.